Hello again, class. This is just a quick video about the history of experimental psychology. Okay, so psychology as an experimental science did not emerge until the late 1800s. So you may be wondering, and yeah, anong paniniwala ng mga tao sa psychology before 1800s? Well, psychology was not even considered as a branch of science, but a branch of philosophy. It is under mental philosophy. Back then, psychology was not even a helping profession because it aims to answer why do we exist, why do we function, what's the structure of consciousness. Their aim was more on the philosophical side than scientific. Diba? Ibang-iba siya sa alam natin ngayon. Eh ma'am, paano naman po ang practices ng mga tao na nag-aaral ng psychology before? Paano nila pinag-aaralan ng mga tao? Nagamit ba sila ng projective tests, intelligence tests, behavioral tests? Ma'am, ano po ang pinagagawa ng mga psychologists kuno before? Tandaan nyo class, all of their practices are pseudo-scientific. Pseudo-science gives the appearance of being scientific but has no true scientific basis. Therefore, they don't use any written tests nor any scientific methods to back up their beliefs. Now, let me give you some famous examples of pseudo-scientific practices before. Take note na ito ay solemnly pinaniniwalaan ng mga tao noon. First, we have chronology. It involves assessing traits by measuring the sites and location of bumps and indentations on the skull. This was founded by Franz Joseph Gall. Eh ma'am, paano naman po ito ginagawa? Well, class, a phrenologist would run their fingertips and palms over the skulls of their patients. Aapain nila kung nasaan yung mga bumps and dents sa ulo ng patients nila. And for example, meron sila na apa dito sa part na to, the patient has a problem with his or her self-esteem. What you see is the map that Franz Gall did para i-guide ang mga phrenologists sa pagkapaan ng mga bumps or dents sa ulo ng patients. Di ba ang interesting ng paliniwala nila before? Pero ngayon, wala nang mga meaning yan. Baka nauntog ka lang, kaya nagkaroon ng bumps sa ulo mo. Here are some of the pictures sa study ni Franz tungkol sa structure ng mga ulo. First, we can see kung paano niya dinistinguish ang ulo ng mga genuine and unreliable husband. We can see na malaki ang difference nila at the back of their head and sa part ng noo nila. Mas malapat ang noo ng mga genuine husband and mas malaki yung bump nila sa likod ng ulo nila. Unlike sa mga manluloko na husband. Do you know anyone na ganyan ulo? Do you think na tama ang sinasabi ni Franz? So I've searched the internet na katulad ng ulo na din describe ni Franz. And I saw this picture ni Vin Diesel and Dwayne Johnson. As you can see, nare-resemble ng ulo ni Vin Diesel yung ulo ng genuine husband. Well, si Durak naman, nare-resemble niya yung sa unreliable husband. Although, hindi ko ino-conclude na unreliable si Durak. But, I found out that Vin Diesel only had one wife and Durak had two wives. Coincidence? Although, matagal nang nagsasama si Durak and yung second wife niya. And class, ganito naman daw yung distinction sa mga babae genuine and unreliable. So, meron ba kayong kilala na ganito yung shape ng ulo nila? Check nyo if sila ay faithful or unfaithful. Pero guys, remind ko lang ulit kayo na this is a pseudo-scientific practice. Wala tong scientific basis. Okay? And talking about being judgmental, isa rin pseudo-practice ang i-judge ang pagkatao mo sa structure lamang ng mukha mo. And it is called the shabnam. It involves using facial features, particularly the appearance of eyes, nose, chin, and forehead, to evaluate a person's traits, mental capacity, and skills. Just imagine, titignan lang yung mga facial features mo, and then malalaman na rin nila kagat yung mental capacity mo. Ang galing. As you can see here in the picture, ito daw ang features ng mukha ng isang deceitful or mapangloko na tao. On the other side, ito naman daw yung itsura ng honest na tao. Kaya magdiwang ang mga malalapad ang noo. Because according to Bishop Nami, malapad na noo is a sign of honesty. Pero sa panahon natin ngayon, we can apply this now, okay? 
Tayo mga nag-aaral ng psychology, di tayo judgmental. We don't judge a person based on their looks or their physical appearance. Next, you the scientific practice is what we call mesmerism. It was invented by Franz Mesmer. He believed that fluids in the body ebbed and flowed by magnetic principles and that both physical and mental illness could be cured by realigning these fluids. Eh ma'am, paano po i-realign yung magnetic fluids sa loob ng tao? Di ba magnetic fluids daw yung nasa loob natin? Kaya magnet ang ginagamit nila or if walang magnet, kamay na lang na mesmer. Nag-boom itong practice ng mesmerism dahil nakikita ng mga tao yung process kapag inaalign na ni mesmer yung magnetic fluids. Dahil na under sa hypnotic state yung mga patients. And once they are hypnotized, Mesmer will strongly suggest that they will be cured. Ang galing, di ba? Kaya naman na intriga dito si King Louis XVI. Pina-investigate niya ang Mesmerism. And it was found out that there was no evidence of magnetic forces in our body fluids. Pero, nagpatuloy pa rin ang practice nito. Inalist na lang nila yung tungkol sa magnetic fluids, but the act itself still remains. And tinawag na lang nila itong hypnosis. Ang nagpatuloy ng practice na ito ay si Jean Charcot. And nakita ito ni Papi Freud. And ginamit niya itong treatment sa hysteria. And then Freud teamed up with Joseph Brewer. And what they did was, while well, the patients were in a highly suggestible state of hypnosis, Brewer asked them to describe their problems, conflicts, and fears. And what they found out is patients became extremely emotional. Noong din na-describe nila yung mga problems nila. And they immediately felt relieved after they emerged from the hypnotic state. And also guys, the patients didn't remember kung ano ang sinabi nila noong nasa hypnotic state sila. What happened during the hypnosis was beyond their awareness. And sa na-observe ni Brewer and ni Freud, they discovered na yung tinatawag nating unconscious mind. And kung kano nito ini-influensyahan ang psychological disorder. So Brewer and Freud discovered na through hypnosis, may recall ng mga patients ang trauma na binoon nila sa unconscious mind nila. And once na release na nila ito, they will suddenly feel relief. But take note class na binitawan rin ito ni Freud and he proceeded to the practice of free association. Take note of that class dahil pwede siyang makasama sa exam nyo in the future. And lastly, sa famous pseudoscientific practices natin ay spiritualism. It involves making contact with ghosts and dead spirits. Dito rin napasok ang mga exorcism, pag-uusap sa mga dead ancestors, or telekinesis, etc. So what changed everything? Bakit hindi na tayo dumedepende sa practices nito? Well, class, only one person changed everything, and it was revolutionary. His name was Wilhelm Wundt. He was the very first experimental psychologist. Take note na siya rin ang unang gumamit ng term na psychologist. And the birth of psychological science is when he opened the first laboratory dedicated to psychology, and that was on 1879. And now, we call him the father of experimental psychology. And even some people regarded him as father of psychology, hindi si Sigmund Freud. Dahil siya ang nagpaalis ng psychology sa branch ng philosophy. And thus, this was the beginning of modern psychology. On 1881, he published the first ever journal of psychology, which he entitled Philosophical Studies. Eh ma'am, bakit hindi na lang psychological studies kung inalis na rin naman tayo sa branch ng philosophy? Well class, may kumuha na kasi ng title ng psychological studies noon. But it was a study about telekinesis, clairvoyance, and everything about psychic. Kasi nga, remember class, psychology was linked to being psychic that day. So ano naman ang ginagawa ni Wilhelm Wundt sa laboratory niya? He was using scientific method to study human sensory experiences. Pero mas focus siya sa perception ng mga tao or sa sense of sight. 
So, ang ginagawa niya, meron siya ipapakitang image or photo sa mga tao. And then, kailangan mabilis na ite-describe nung tao kung ano man yung nakikita niya dun sa photo na yun. So, this was the beginning of including science sa psychology. And Wilhelm Wundt did that through experimentation. Madami rin siyang naging na followers. And one of them was G. Stanley Hall. Siya naman ang unang nag-open ng psychology laboratory sa United States. And since psychology now rely on data, facts, and numbers, and also na rin ang experimentation, may mga tao na masyadong nag-enjoy sa experiments at nalimutan na nilang tao rin ang pinag-eksperimentuhan nila. And tatalakayin natin yan sa susunod na lesson. So that's all guys. God bless and mag-iingat kayo palagi.